Housing market heats up. Last month marked the best July for housing in a decade, according to Realtor.com. And three cities are leading the pack as low mortgage rates entice buyers. Let's bring in Rogers Healy, Rogers Healy and Associates, real estate owner. Rogers, how hot is the market and how overpriced is it, you would say? I think the market's still doing awesome. It's still really hot, but it's not necessarily overpriced. We're just seeing some places get a little bit on the less affordable side, but you know, it, it's still it's still relative, and we're still really seeing the effects of this of the spring market all the way this late in the summer. Well, let's talk about the top three housing markets in July: Vallejo, California, Dallas, Texas, and Denver, Colorado. What is driving right. these markets? Because even with Dallas, you'd think with the collapse in oil prices, that the market wouldn't be so on fire there. Yeah. So as a Dallas site myself, we, we've seen such an influx of job growth here that the outer the outer skirts of, of the city have really been affected positively. Uh, the oil and gas market doesn't really affect Dallas that much as it does Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. So it, it's been great here. And we've seen corporate companies from California, from Florida, from New York move here. And with that, you know, each one brings about a thousand jobs and supply and demand. There, there's always going to be people looking for for properties in Dallas. And then. You mentioned Vallejo, which is about about an hour north of San Francisco, and San Francisco being one of the most expensive cities in the country to purchase or to rent in. I think people are comfortable with an hour drive, which in California, that's not really that much. And then the third one, I think you said, was Denver, correct? Yes, Denver. Yeah, Den Denver and Dallas to me are, are very similar. There's headquarters there, whether it's Chipotle or um, you know stuff like Core Power Yoga, which is very Denver, and they're both easy <laughs> travel cities. And if, if, if people like you know something that's central, Denver and Dallas are, are, are right perfect for them. And legal marijuana in Denver too. Yes. Um, yeah, I say <laughs> yeah. So you want to be close to your product. Um, so right. Rogers. One of the biggest things that I'm seeing come across is that there's really kind of a lack of capacity for new builds, new houses. You've got publicly traded REITs, which actually own a bunch of houses. Is that really what's right. also helping drive the market right now, too, because there's just not capacity out there? Yeah, it's tough. I read something in the paper the other day that the uh, median house for median new construction home now has gone from like 275 to 350. And it is getting tougher, but I also think that's why we're seeing these cities like Vallejo, which most people probably haven't vacationed to yet, um, kind of come on the scene. And what used to be 15 minutes outside the city is now an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. So I, I think that people are going to be in their car a little bit longer listening to you guys on the radio and uh, realizing that if they want something new and nice, they're going to have to be a little bit further away from what they wanted. Who's buying? I mean, are we, are we starting to see millennials come into the, to the housing market and buying, or is that, are they still left out? Yeah, yeah, millennials have been buying for the, for, the, for the past few years, but I think the product that they're buying has changed. They used to be kind of urban core purchasers, and now we've seen the millennials, whether they're 24, 28, except, you know, single, married, kids, no kids, buying the suburbs. Um, but we're, see, we're seeing a lot of empty nesters still downsize, and, um, you know, it, it's, it's still just as strong as it has been the last couple of years. What do you think is the best market to buy in right now in terms of the affordability? Where would you buy uh, if you big, had, you know, some yeah. cash sitting around? Yeah, um, I, I'm a big fan of college towns. I think the mm -hmm. college towns that have uh, rent revenue potential are always safe plays, whether it's a Madison, Wisconsin, and Athens, Georgia, Oxford, Mississippi, just any big college town where you're always going to ha have an influx of, of kids coming and going. I think you're, you're, you're very well protected because with that comes, you know, the new development of retail and high-end rentals, and then in my mind, that always drives traffic. Um, so. Yeah, and you'll see cities like San Antonio come on the map. Fort Worth is doing really well. Cities like Provo, Utah, um, and, and even Boulder, Colorado have all done very well recently. Well, you know, you mentioned the millennial buyers. We saw a report that millennials are now buying their dream home. So they're kind of over leveraging, if you will, because they know that they, yeah. um, they've got. Why is that happening? I found that fascinating. Yeah, the whole $30,000 millionaire concept, yeah. I guess, is, you know, they want what they can barely afford. Uh, but, you know, interest rates are still low, and if they've done a fairly decent job of saving their money, they're probably going to put it all towards towards a property that they probably shouldn't be buying. And, um, mm. you know, I, I've seen it. Uh, go ahead. No, I said that's interesting because they're not buying stocks. They're buying homes. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, they want tangible. Yeah. Rogers, it was great to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, Rogers, for Be well. And, and